Europe gets its first underwater museum. A museum featuring more than 300 sculptures opened to the public this week, 14 meters beneath the sea. The Museo Atlantico Underwater Museum is located off the south coast of Lazarote in Spain's Canary Islands. The museum is the first of its kind in Europe. The 2,500 square meter site is best explored by scuba diving around it. But if you don't want to strap on a wetsuit and oxygen tank, then it can also be viewed through a glass bottom boat. The permanent sculptures are the work of British artist Jason Taylor. All the sculptures have been made with high density pH neutral concrete and no corrosive metals. That's so the artworks don't damage the marine ecosystem and will encourage life to prosper in the area, which is a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. Some of the works carry a political message, such as this piece depicting migrants crossing the Mediterranean Sea. The artist said it was a tribute to migrants who succeeded, but also to those whose dreams and hopes remain at the bottom of the sea. Taylor said he hoped the museum would foster a better understanding of the marine environment and how much we depend on it. His first underwater exhibition was in Grenada in the Caribbean more than a decade ago. In 2009, Taylor followed that up with an installation at the Cancun Underwater Museum of Art in Mexico. In 2014, this 60 ton sculpture by Taylor became the largest ever installed underwater when it made its debut in Nassau in the Bahamas. Taylor spent the past two years living in Lanzarote, creating artworks for the museum, and started dropping sculptures onto the seabed about a year ago. Hmm, wonder if fish like art. Here's some other fascinating exhibitions. Ultra-realistic Japanese dolls aren't just motionless sex slaves, they're also art. Check out this sweet-looking Japanese woman at the Ofudo. A far cry from a vaguely female-shaped inflatable beach ball with strategically placed holes. Orient Industries silicon hump dolls have undergone some major evolution. Due to YouTube's ridiculously inconsistent policies on sex and nudity, even silicon nudity, we can't show you the uncensored pics here. But click the link in the description and you will see it all. Seriously, full silicon nudity, no BS. In 1977, Orient Industries founder unveiled Hohoemi, very accurately described as a simple lady who consisted of only a head, bosoms, and a wormhole. Her sisters, Kagemi, Iaika, and Hana 1 and 2, improved things slightly, but still, with their detachable parts, they were closer to a crime scene than objects of lust. But Orient Industry had that Japanese gung-ho spirit, and by 2005, new materials had made new ideas possible. Discombobulated dolls gave way to silicone ladies, such as Angi here, who will not utter a sound during coitus so you can focus 100% on your own pleasure. Petite Jewel is a tad more petite, but uh, still has those all-important oversized boobs. Hater Fingers? You can customize them. Plus, you can pick eye and hair color. Yes, all the hair. The company sells them in pairs, too, if you're into that sister and much younger sister thing. Ms. Yasuragi's body reportedly has six different face options, which is hard to understand because who looks at a face? But if you're looking for something more classy, they've got Geisha Tomoko, who has a kimono or a bunny costume. You can remove her clothing, but the best part about Geisha is she's a drink dispenser. She'll squirt beer, wine, or the fluid of your choice out of her nipples, which is exactly like breastfeeding, so it's not creepy at all. But here's when we start running into trouble. Japan has enough problems with weirdness without making pedo dolls called petite nanos. But wait, there's more! Say konnichiwa to Lala dolls. Now that is some f***ed up shit. If you're more of a Dexter type person, dolls that come in separate pieces are also still available, and her name makes things easy to remember. She's called separate or separato in Japanese. So why are we telling you about this? Clickbait, obviously. We figure 30 to 90% of white men have an Asian fetish, and if a fraction of you click on the video, um, we pay our bills. But there's another reason too. For the 50 year running, Vanilla Gallery in Ginza, Tokyo is showing the dolls as an art exhibit until May 22nd, 2016. The museum dolls made by Orient Industry are mostly clothed and based on paintings of Japanese women by artist Aikanega Yasunari. So with the pretentious artsy fartsy stuff out of the way, down to the real question. How much do the dolls cost? Well, this always in the mood bathing beauty will set you back over 11,000 US dollars. A tad expensive to be sure, but can you put a price on love? Can you? Van Gogh's bedroom available through Airbnb. Ever wondered what it would be like to live in a painting? Well, your chance has arrived. The Art Institute of Chicago recently teamed up with short-term rental platform Airbnb to offer people a unique experience. To live in the subject of Vincent Van Gogh's famous painting, The Bedroom, at just $10 a night. 
The room can accommodate up to two guests and is equipped with all modern amenities such as internet, TV, and air conditioning. The project aims to promote Chicago's upcoming exhibit of Van Gogh's work. The Dutch Impressionist painted the first version of the bedroom in 1888 after he moved into his beloved yellow house in Aries, France. This exhibition will showcase all three versions of the painting for the first time in North America. Some Facebook users already can't wait to experience living in the bedroom. What about you? Would you like to try living in a painting? First, you had to ask permission to use the person's skin after death. Then you dug up the dead body and flayed off the skin from the waist down in one piece. You stole a coin from his widow and placed it inside the scrotum, along with a magical sign scribbled on a piece of paper. The wearer and the pants would purportedly become one and draw money into the scrotum from living people, as well as bringing good luck. The only known intact pair of necropants is currently housed at the Museum of Icelandic Sorcery and Witchcraft in Holmavik, Iceland. Tony Sculpture makes curvy naked women to compete with giant duck. Tony's artist Ling Yunyi opened an exhibition in the ports of the coastal city of Hualien on Wednesday to showcase his latest work, The Tetrapod Goddess a piece consisting of eight four-figured humanoid sculptures standing atop large tetrapods. According to the artist, the work is intended to convey a message against utilitarianism. The blue and green tetrapods are intended to symbolize the ocean and the river, as well as promote reconciliation between Taiwan's two dominant political parties. The Tony's artist's message isn't all storied either. Lin leveled criticism on Dutch artist Florentine Hoffman's popular giant rubber duck. Lin's exhibition has managed to garner high praise from members of the public. Just看, just爱这一块土地, 